I can bet that you've got skin. But do you know what level on the Fitzpatrick scale you are? And do you know what your skin type is? Hate to break it to you, but you're probably wrong. And the reason why is because there's a lot of misinformation out there. And the skin types that we commonly hear about aren't all that accurate. In this video, we are going to discuss what the actual skin types are, what the Fitzpatrick scale is, how you can tell which one is yours, and what products and treatments are going to be best for you. lot that goes into skincare. Have you ever tried a product that worked really great for someone else but did not do anything positive for you? This could be because of your skin type, but unfortunately there's a lot of misinformation out there. Some people on the internet say there's five skin types. Some people say there's up to ten. I don't believe that's true at all. I believe that there are four main skin types and multiple concerns that can happen in tandem. I also believe that a lot of these things happen on a spectrum. They're not type 1, type 2. They happen in varying degrees. You could have a skin type, for example, oily, and a skin concern, such as mature skin or sensitive skin, at the same time. These can also change throughout your life. When you're a teenager, it's probably going to be different than when you're an adult. And it could even be impacted by the environment around you, how dry or how humid the weather is, on top of prescription medications you're taking or even the diet that you're eating. We're also going to discuss the Fitzpatrick scale, a scale that talks about your genetic predisposition to sensitivity and to photoaging, aka sun cancer, sunspots, and sun damage. Did you know that skin types really aren't taught in medical literature? That's something that cosmetic companies use to categorize and advertise their products, or that estheticians or people who work in skincare use to describe concepts to the people that they're helping. When it comes to different skin types, I believe that there are four. There's dry, there's oily, there's combination, and there's normal. And these all happen on a spectrum. There are also skin concerns, of which you could have multiple, and these two could be in varying intensities. This includes acne prone skin, sensitive skin, mature or aging skin, or even hormonal skin and skin circulation. You might know which one you are, you might not, but because there's so much information out there, we're gonna do a little test so that you can figure it out. But first, let's talk about the Fitzpatrick scale, because this is the scale that medical professionals are taught and that's actually used. The Fitzpatrick scale was developed by Thomas Fitzpatrick back in the 1970s, and it's a scale that only has six levels, from number one to number six. This Fitzpatrick scale is how medical professionals identify and categorize different people's genetics so that they know how to approach somebody with a treatment and how likely they are to benefit or be harmed by it, including the sun. Have you ever noticed that some people who have acne have really red, irritated skin, but they don't seem to scar very much? Or some people don't get red at all, but they end up having these big hyperpigmentation marks that are left behind for months, if not years to come. Number one on the scale is usually the lightest skin. People who fall into this category can take treatments really well, meaning chemical peels, lasers, microneedling, different products, etc. And even though they might experience redness and flushing, they usually don't have a lot of damage or pigmentation left over. Whereas this group, group number one, is extraordinarily susceptible to the sun. They should be using high amounts of sunscreen every single day, and unfortunately, they are more genetically prone to skin cancer. Now, when you go up the scale, two, three, four, five to six, you have quite different skin. This skin is extraordinarily dark, rich, and pigmented, and you also have to be very careful with it. Someone with a Fitzpatrick level of six is going to need a more gentle approach to things like peels, lasers, or microneedling. This skin type is more reactive. It gets offended more easily, meaning if you put an acid on the skin, it might cause pigmentation because the melanin in the skin over-responds. People with a skin type that's higher on the Fitzpatrick scale are also a little 
bit more prone to keloid scarring, which can be an issue. And that's why if someone's prone to keloids, they should never do a treatment like microneedling. People with a higher Fitzpatrick number, like a six, also usually do pretty well in the sun. They can usually go out with relatively low SPF and they don't experience as much skin cancer or as many issues like melanoma as people elsewhere on the scale. So basically type one is great with products and treatments, but really sensitive to the sun. And as you go down the scale, people tend to be more tolerant to the sun, but less tolerant to products. Now, how do you know which one you are? You could enroll yourself in aesthetic school or in medical school, or there are some fun graphics and infographics online, or you could ask a medical professional. You can also look at your genetic traits. For instance, your eye color, your skin color, and your hair color. People who are a number one usually have very, very light skin, light eyes, and light or red hair. Usually these people have more freckles and their eyes might even be a little bit gray. A number two, the hair gets a little bit darker, the eyes are still blue, blue and the skin is still fair. A number three might have green or blue eyes, maybe even a little bit of hazel, but the skin doesn't burn in the sun like the first two. The skin at a number three starts to tan when it does get into contact with sun exposure. The natural hair color is also usually a bit more brown. Type four skin has yet more melanin and the eyes are usually green or brown. Hair is usually brown or a dark brown and skin usually tans and darkens in the sun. A skin type number five always tans and darkens in the sun, and the hair is usually a dark brown and eyes are brown as well. A type 6 has very, very dark melanin infused skin. Eyes are very brown if not black, and hair is usually black as well. These are also the people who have probably never experienced a sunburn, only tanning. Your Fitzpatrick scale is something that does not change. It is genetically determined and it stays with you for your entire life. You can really find out the truth by talking to an esthetician or a dermatologist. But unlike your Fitzpatrick scale, which doesn't change, your skin type can change. And there's many things that could impact it. Again, the four main skin types are oily skin, dry skin, normal, and combination. But if you think about it, our environment could change what our skin type is. If it's more humid out, our skin might feel more oily. If we go to a dry climate, our skin might get dry. And especially as we go from the teenage years where most people are more oily to our adult years, our skin does tend to dry out. While this isn't true for everybody, it is important to note that your lifestyle, your age, and even what you eat can impact how your skin reacts and therefore your skin type. Now, how do you know which one you are? There's actually a really simple test that I like to do, but first we have to address normal skin. If you've got normal skin, why are you here? Normal skin begs the question, what is normal? But if you don't have oiliness, if you don't have dryness, if you're not combination and your skin is balanced and just great, you probably have normal skin. And if so, thanks, but also, what are you doing here? You must be really curious and I commend you on your dedication to education. But also I'm very, very jealous. <laughs> People who have oily skin generally have oil all over the face. By the end of the day, the face seems a little bit shiny, dewy, and even slippery. Mainly here on the T-zone, the nose and the forehead and chin, but also in the C-zone, meaning around the jaw and elsewhere. People with oily skin also usually have a very oily scalp and very oily hair. Because certain products you're using or the water that comes out of your shower can temporarily change your skin type for a couple of hours, it's also helpful to look at these other areas of the body. Check that oily scalp. And when you do get out of the shower, if you have oily skin, before applying any moisturizer or any product, if your skin tends to feel like butter or cookie dough, your skin type is probably naturally oily. Now what about dry skin? Obviously, if you have dry patches and dry flakes that are natural and not caused by the use of a product, that's probably dry skin. But there are other ways to tell as well. If your skin seems to be a little bit dull or ashy and it's definitely not producing enough oil, this could be a sign that you have naturally oily skin. You can also check your elbows or your knees. If these are particularly ashy, it could mean that you have dry skin all over. A really good test to see if you have dry skin is again, the shower test. After you've been in the shower, when you get out, don't wash your face. Walk around the house for about an hour or two. If your skin still feels super, super tight, almost like it's hard to move it or even cracky, it probably means you have dry skin. Whereas if your skin does feel buttery, you're probably more oily. 
or you could be combination. If you have combination skin, it means you have patches of dryness and oiliness. These could be in different areas, but usually it means that oiliness is here around the T-zone, around the nose and the chin, and there might be some dryness here by the jaw or even by the cheeks or by the temples of the forehead. You can tell if you have combination skin by the end of the day, but remember, all of these skin types can vary. You might not be as oily as your friend, but you still might have oily skin. You might have combination skin that has dryness and oily areas, but you might tend to swing a little bit more towards the dry side. That's why these skin types really aren't definitive. And remember, your environment, your diet, the products you're using on the face, the quality of water that comes out of your tap can all impact your skin type for the time being. And these can change throughout your lifetime. When it comes to skin concerns, you probably know what these are. If you're super breakout prone, you have acne prone skin. If you're starting to get fine lines and wrinkles, you might have more mature skin. And if you put on products or even water and your skin tends to get really red or burn or stingy, you probably got sensitive skin. I really hate it when companies or when skincare gurus say that these are skin types because it's not a type, it's a condition. Your type is oily, dry, combination, or normal, and you could have multiple conditions at varying degrees. I have oily skin, I tend to be acne prone, and I am sensitive. Yes, I like to burn my skin off. I don't mind the redness or the tingling, but I am sensitive. Somebody else might have been just like me when they were younger, but as they got older, they got more mature skin, and maybe acne no longer bothers them. They are therefore no longer acne prone, but do have more mature skin. And again, how acne prone you can be or how sensitive you can be all comes on a spectrum. It's not, I'm not sensitive or I am. I swear to God, if someone puts some straight up Jessner peel on your face, it's gonna feel sensitive. It's just how sensitive you are to most products or how acne prone you are in most situations. Remember that unfortunately we can experience multiple conditions at the same time. But the reason for knowing all of this is so that you can know what skincare products work best for you and you can realize what ingredients will actually help your specific condition and work for your skin type and Fitzpatrick scale. You've probably been thinking about what skin type you really are, what your Fitzpatrick number is, and what conditions you're concerned with. Post a comment below with what you feel you are, and let's have everybody strike up a conversation. Let's find other people with our similar skin types and see if we react well to some of the same active ingredients, or if we like some of the same products, or if we deal with some of the same pressing issues. For instance, people who are really oily prone are usually acne prone but that's not always true. Also, people who usually are oily when they're younger tend to have less wrinkles when they're older. Tell me about your skin. What's it like and what works for you? If you do understand these things, you'll have a much better time reading cosmetic labels. Remember that cosmetic companies put skin types on their products for one of two reasons. Number one, to categorize them, to help you, because usually oily prone products are going to have things that are less prone to breaking people out. Our products formulated for dry skin are going to be a little bit more hydrating. But the second is also marketing. A lot of companies like to slap these labels onto very similar products just to get you to spend money and to categorize people. For instance, people who are younger, usually more oily prone. They might market that differently than to somebody who's combination or dry that is a little bit older. They'll also charge you more, FYI. It's not tea, but like, <laughs> it might as well be. <laughs> There is so much information out there that I wish I knew when I was struggling with my acne at its worst. I feel like doctors and even estheticians never really spoke to me about the Fitzpatrick scale or about the different conditions that can go along with skin types. And if I just had that information, I might have felt a little bit more control or a little bit more power and hope as to there's something more I can understand or do. I hope that this video helps you. This video is <laughs> the calling to the young 14 year old me who is struggling so bad. This entire skin science series is the guidebook of what I wish that I could have known, the hope that I wish I would have had, and the community that I so badly wanted to connect to when I felt that I couldn't tell anybody about how I was feeling or what I was going through.
I hope that skin science has proven to be impactful for you. And I hope that even just the information in this video allows you to approach your products and your routine in a way that's actually going to work for you. So remember, never read the front of those skincare labels, always turn around the back. And now that you have more information on your skin type, seek out those products that are going to work for you. And even better, seek out the people who are going through the same thing so that you can talk, inspire, and help them and be inspired and encouraged by them as well. The reason that I love this butterfly family so much is because of that love and support. I see it every single Saturday when I look down there in those comments. So if you did enjoy this video, use those motor neurons and give this a thumbs up. Hit subscribe and the notification bell because every single Saturday at 11 a.m. we talk skin science, understanding the chemistry of our cosmetics, the biology of our skincare, and how to take control over our acne and cultivate a community that feels the same way. So I'll see you in the comments and until next week, stay hydrated. I'll see you next week on Skin Science.